not sure uh, how many of you have heard of an organization called New Wine. Maybe just a, a quick show of hands, those of you who know of, of New Wine. Uh, I've become a, a bit of a, a devotee of New Wine in recent years. It's funny because I, uh, Susanna, my wife, was asking me for a couple of years in a row, oh, could we go to New Wine uh, down at Kapiti? And I kind of looked at it and thought it was a bit expensive and uh, I've already talked about being Scottish, so that was never going to work. Uh, and so decided that, no, we, we wouldn't go. And then one year she got sick of asking me, so she just booked us and said, we're going. So uh, that worked well. So we went and I absolutely loved it. And this most recent one uh, this year, uh, I heard from a guy called Richard Black. And many of you will uh, know of Richard from Mind Health and Christchurch. And he, um, he spoke about the sovereignty of God, and he spoke of it in a way that I perhaps hadn't thought of quite this way before. He said, sometimes as Christians, we, in our desire to believe that God is sovereign and he is uh, utterly and completely in control over all things, sometimes if we don't hold in tension the fact that the word calls us to be a people of prayer uh, and a people who petition him, uh, then we can end up dialing up the sovereignty of God to such an extent that we become virtual defeatists, where essentially God is going to be overarching in all things. Therefore, why pray for anything? Uh, ultimately, if God's will is going to be done, then what's the role of prayer? And the problem is if, if we have that view of God's sovereignty uh, kind of uh, ratcheted up too high, then um, it affects our prayer life and we don't travail in prayer the way that scripture calls us to and uh i thought about this because I, part part of me it has some reformed leanings in my theology and and i, and I quite like some of the more uh, yeah paul's really shocked by that um I, I quite like some of the the more um i don't know conservative is a, a a well-worn term but but just the the thoroughly biblical stance uh that that you get and so the sovereignty of God is always something that I have clung to. I've always said that God is sovereign and, you know, he is God and we are not, and, and he will ultimately fulfill his purposes. But I hadn't really thought about whether or not that might be impacting the way uh, that I pray. And Richard Black uh, brought up the, um, the story in Luke chapter 18. So Luke 18 uh, verses 1 to 8. He told them a parable to the effect that they ought always to pray and not lose heart. He said, in a certain city, there was a judge who neither feared God nor respected man. And there was a widow in that city who kept coming to him and saying, give me justice against my adversary. For a while he refused, but afterward he said to himself, though I neither fear God nor respect man, yet because this widow keeps bothering me, I will give her justice so that she will not beat me down by her continual coming. And the Lord said, hear what the, right, the unrighteous judge says. And will not God give justice to his elect who cry to him day and night? Will he delay long over them? I tell you, he will give justice to them speedily. Nevertheless, when the son of man comes, will he find faith on earth? I was really challenged by this, <clears throat> particularly because, uh, I don't know about you, but sometimes when you begin to pray for something, uh, after a little while, if you don't see an answer to that prayer, it can be uh, tempting to, uh, to arrive at the conclusion that God has answered by his silence, or he's answered by his inaction, uh, that because we haven't yet seen what we're asking for, then God has, in a sense, um, answered in the negative. Uh, and this uh, parable actually challenges that. And the thing I love about it is that this is Jesus himself. Uh, the one who taught his disciples how to pray. And he is saying, um, just as this widow treated this unrighteous judge, this is how I'm encouraging you to come before the Lord. And there's a couple of things I just want to draw out of this, which are important to note. Even though the context has to do with the widow asking for justice, uh, you know, the, the good um, Bible scholars among us know that we always have to read it in context. And some people take that too far and say, well, what if we're not asking for justice? You know, what happens if we're praying for rain? Well, then this, this parable doesn't apply to us. But actually, uh, Jesus said at the very, or, or I should say Luke said at the very beginning, he told them a parable to the effect that they ought always to pray and not lose heart. He actually starts it off general, starts it off 
are suggesting to us that whatever it is that we're praying for, um, as long as we're praying in line with uh, the revealed will of God, the things that we know he is for. And so when we sing a song like that, Lord, build your kingdom here, well, we already know that that's in line with the will of God. Uh, when we pray for revival in our cities and towns, that, that there would be a, a huge harvest of, of new believers coming to the kingdom. Well, we know that that's God's will. We know that, as Peter said, it's, it's not God's desire that any should perish. Uh, when, when we're praying for people to be delivered and released and set free from bondage, uh, set free from captivity, we know that, that that's the revealed will of God because Jesus said in Luke 4 that he'd come to do exactly that, to set free the captives, to proclaim the year of Jubilee. And so whatever it is that we're praying for, if we know it's in the will of God, then how amazing is this? Jesus says, you should come to him like this persistent widow came to this unrighteous judge. And if the unrighteous judge eventually had to say, oh, for goodness sake, I'm going to say yes, if, if for no other reason than just to get her off my back. And, and Jesus uses this parable to encourage us to pray to God. I just think that's so cool. And I think that should give us enormous uh, confidence in the way that we come before him in prayer. This is uh, in, in Hebrews, it talks about, uh, let us approach the throne of grace with confidence. This is how God has encouraged us and invited us to come and to pray. And, and James says, you do not have because you do not ask and you do not uh, ask with the right motives. And so if our motives are pure, we want to see the will of God, we want to see the kingdom of God, uh, which is what this uh, prayers one has always been about from the beginning. Lord God, this is about the flourishing of our nation. This is about your kingdom coming here in Aotearoa, New Zealand, as it is in heaven. We know already, just by the fact that we're here in this room, that our prayers are in tune with the heart of God. Well, then we should have enormous confidence to keep travailing, to keep seeking, to keep asking, to keep knocking, and to expect that our Heavenly Father who hears uh, will answer our prayers in his timing, sure, and not ours. But, but he is disposed to answer prayers in line with his will. I want to finish with, um, with a Tark Barna quote. I'm sure he won't mind. Uh, when he came and spoke at Movement Day uh, in Wellington, gosh, that's coming up two years ago. Now it doesn't feel like it. Uh, he talked about uh, a baseball player, and he was already talking my language because I love baseball. And he said, a baseball player, a batter in particular, uh, he will hit the ball probably only about 15 to 20% of the time he swings the bat. So he swings and he swings and he swings and he keeps missing, but he doesn't give up because he knows eventually that if he keeps swinging that bat, he will make contact. If he just keeps swinging, he will make contact. And we know that if we will just keep travailing in prayer, this is Jesus' encouragement to us. If we will just keep coming before the Lord and asking him for the things he has already said he wants to give, then we can know that he is disposed to answer our prayer. So I want that to be an encouragement for us as we go into battle, as we, as we fall uh, to our knees, as, as God's army that marches on its knees, and, and we spend this time in our, uh, in our uh, breakout rooms in prayer to pray with that confidence, um, to pray with that uh, it's, it's almost, Jesus is almost encouraging an impetuous kind of confidence. Uh, there's, there's almost a little bit of uh, righteous cockiness about the way that we come before the Lord and pray, uh, especially when we're praying for the things that we know are already on his heart. Uh, so let's be confident, let's be bold, uh, and let's not give up and continue to pray for the things that we want to see of God in our nation. Mm -hmm.